Welcome to this training video for the Input Chooser app. Input Chooser is a web based application that will allow you to set up all of the video and audio inputs on a TriCaster system running Advanced Edition 2 or an IP series system. Now, what you need to do to get this running is first download the application, which uh, you can find on the website here under this Input Chooser button. Uh, the EXE that you receive, install this on your TriCaster or IP series system. And then on another computer, you can open up a web browser and we need to type in the correct URL to uh, open the application. Now, what we need to know is what the IP address of your TriCaster is. If you don't know what that is, uh, you can get that information by going to your TriCaster, and in the upper right corner is a little globe icon. Uh, click on this, and it will list the IP of your system. So you can see here the IP of my TriCaster, 192.168.1.79. So we will now go into our web browser, type in that IP, and then you're going to type the word input, or put a slash in an input, I-N-P-U-T, and that will open up the Input Chooser app from the TriCaster or IP series system. So you'll hit enter, and at this screen, you're presented with two columns of information. On the left side are the inputs of the system in question that you're, you're using. So in my case, this is a TriCaster 8000, which uh, has 12 inputs on it, and it's going to show you uh, video and audio wise what they are currently set to. Uh, if they're green, it basically means that it, it's set to something that it thinks is a valid source. And if it's uh, kind of this orangey color, uh, that basically just means it's set to an empty source. These are kind of available for use. Although certainly it doesn't really know if input eight really has something coming into it or not. So, you know, that's not to say it, it might be empty, but it is set to something that's not just black. On the uh, right side, are all of the sources available now this is this uh display is available both in a video and an audio configuration and this can be uh, selected by clicking this little arrow icon in the uh, upper left corner of the application so in the video configuration panel we can see our eight physical inputs and then below that we see all of the ndi sources out on the network um, if we click this to the audio configuration, uh, again, we'll see all the audio physical inputs. Then we'll see uh, NDI sources that are available out on the network, along with Dante. Now, the system doesn't know if you actually have Dante installed or not. It just will give you the option to select Dante. So you still need to have the Dante virtual sound card software installed on the system for these settings to truly take effect. And then below that are the follow settings. And I'll, I'll describe a little bit more in detail what the follow settings truly mean um, when using it from this application, because it does work a little differently than what it will do uh, when you use the follow uh, settings directly inside the TriCaster. But to set up an input is very easy. Uh, you select the channel of the TriCaster or the input of the TriCaster you want to set up. And then on the right side, you select what you want to put in that channel. So let's say I want to put my test pattern application, I'll select it. And then if I want to connect both the video and the audio of this source together and put that in that, uh, put it in channel nine here, I'll hit connect. And you'll see in a second here, it has now set up uh, channel nine with the test pattern application. And just to show you that it is there, there's my TriCaster and you can see uh, input nine showing up with uh, a test pattern and audio. Um, appearing in there. Now, you aren't limited to having to do this one at a time when setting up video. So I could, for example, uh, select a channel and then select uh, multiple sources that I want to put in here, and it will just fill them in, go down the list filling them in. So uh, for example, if I wanted to put um, you know, these three sources down as 10, 11, and 12, I can select them in the order. And you can also rearrange these just by, you know, clicking on and changing them around to however you want them to be. You can also, if you wanted to replace all of these channels, you could even start at one and select up to 12 inputs and it will replace the current uh, selections that are in here with whatever selections you happen to put in, uh, in place instead. And when I select that, you'll see that it has set up all uh, three of those. We can go back and you can set up see that my TriCaster now has uh, inputs 10 and 11 and 12 uh, configured as well. Now, a few other things you can do is you can set up uh, video and audio separately if you wanted to. So I just cleared out input nine. And just to show you here, if I select a, uh, a source and hit video connect, it will only connect the video to this input, it will leave the audio alone. So whatever the audio was on, it's still going to stay on that connection. In this case, it was on silence. So uh, 
it's it's going to stay there. Um, you can also do the same uh, with the audio as well. So if I wanted to, I could go, for example, take take the test pattern audio and just connect the audio in, but not connect the video. So those options are also available in here. Now, one last thing I do want to point out is the all follow button. This works differently when using it from the application uh, than when you use it in the TriCaster main UI. Um, really, from the application standpoint, if you're going to always use this to set up your inputs, there's no need to use the follow option at all because it really doesn't do anything from an from a web-based application standpoint. Uh, the follow option uh, works from the local TriCaster UI. When you locally select a source and the audio is set to follow, the TriCaster UI will follow where that source goes. But when I'm sending the commands through the macro system, which is what this application is doing, I have to specifically tell it what goes where. So if something is set to follow, while the UI, the local UI is set up to follow, from a macro standpoint, it's just going to stay in what it last was, which typically is going to be nothing. So uh, just realize that I, I do give you an option to reset things back to follow if you're going to go back to the local UI to start configuring things or just to set a system back kind of the way it was. And the options are there if you do want to set it, but just realize that uh, it doesn't behave the same way when using it from the web application. Well, that's the pretty quick uh, instructions on how to use this. I think everything else on it, you'll probably be able to figure out very much on your own. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments, you can get a hold of me uh, with my email address, which you can find by clicking the little green icon in the upper uh, right-hand corner of the application. And I hope you find Input User useful. Thank you.